so you joined the family business. How do you feel about that? You loving it? Yeah, I am really liking it. So yeah, I mean, it's making a lot of calls every day and, but you know, we get to help people out in that are in really sticky situations. So hmm. yeah, that, I really like it. The idea of getting into the business was something you've always considered, but what really brought you into it? Yeah. So it, it's always been weighing on me to, uh, you know, get involved in the fam family business. There's always been kind of a question in the back of my head of, you know, should I do this? Should, should I learn about the business? And I wouldn't say that that weight definitely never came from my family. No one was, you know, going down my throat trying to like, you know, get me to join the business. No one was doing that. I, I completely, it was on my own accord. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I, so I went to the Marines for five years, went to college and then got a uh, job as an, an engineer at a, at a large defense contractor. And, while I was there, I mean, I was enjoying my time while I was there. There were some bad things about the, you know, it being a big, big company and all the bureaucracy that I had to deal with. Um, but overall, it was a good experience. And while I was there, uh, there, there were a few things that happened with my, with my dad where he, um, he actually broke his neck while in a biking accident. Wow. And also he ended up getting uh, prostate cancer. And so mm. that kind of, because I was never really thinking about it before. I wasn't really thinking, oh, you know, my, uh, I, I just think, oh, my dad's always gonna be here, right? But with those big health scares, that's kind of like, I, I had a lot weighing on my shoulders and uh, with uh, possibly going into the family business and that's kind of what broke the camel's back. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, that, that kind of like made me realize his mortality and realize that, you know, I, I if I wanna get involved in the family business, right now is the best time because you never know what's gonna happen in the future. Even you growing up with your dad and kind of being around the business, you probably had a really great understanding with that. So it probably seemed a bit more natural. Yeah, there, there was there were some times when I was a kid where I'd go and uh, do little tasks for him. Uh, I, I wouldn't say that I was always around the business, but it it really did feel natural when I when I when I started here. And I, I haven't been with the company for too long, but um, just and I think it, it might yeah might have had to do with the fact that I was involved. With the business when I was uh, when I was younger and I was around the business, I've always heard him talking, and um, yeah, so it, it definitely gave me the the foundation the foundational knowledge to get involved. Um, but I'm definitely it's definitely a big learning curve. Also, you I guess having a career as an engineer before, do you think that helped with the business at all? Yeah, th there's some parts of it that uh, that, it, that some parts did help out. Um, so, you know, I was working with a lot of people. It's a big company. So, you know, I, I had to constantly interact with people. So I guess on that front, it did help out a little bit, but I, I would say the majority of kind of what set me up for this is I also have an education in physics and educate in physics. You're really tackling the hardest questions. Um, you, you really, it, it, it's a very difficult, um, it, you're, you're tackling a lot of problems that, uh, that are very hard, hard to solve. So it's definitely helped me with, with problem solving and um, it's very, it's all logical and this business is very logical as well. I mean, a, a lot of these, uh, a lot of these structures are, are, like, are like equations basically where, you know, you, you, you know, if, if a person has this, then they have, then they need this form of asset protection. Um, so yeah, there's, there's a lot of like logic involved. It's a very logical business and, you know, engineering and physics it, are they're They're all very logical as well. So yeah, I, like I would say that helps out. Helps out a lot. It seems like they're all just big on problem solving. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when you have a job like uh, protecting people's assets, they come out with all different types of situations. So just right. thinking quick, having that social, social and personal touch uh, to kind of dive in with them and solve their problems for them. I mean, it's gotta be a huge relief for your clients. Right, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, yeah, so I, I would say that my background did help me out somewhat. Um, and I would say, but yeah, it's certain, it's definitely a big learning curve. So mm -hmm. what makes it a big learning curve for you? What are some things that you're excited to learn? I guess. Um, yeah, cause I get hit with, uh, questions from all over the place. So, right. you know, that there could be thousands of questions that a person can ask about asset, asset protection. Uh, but, but the thing is, even though there's thousands of questions, uh, there might only be, you know, there might only be a hundred options for the, for the person, right? Mm. So you have to figure out, you have to kind of narrow down, you know, which 10 are fitting into what category. Um, and that, that's, that, that's the biggest learning curve there. So I'm trying to just categorize stuff, um, into different cubby holes for ass protection. You feel like joining the military set you up for 
like I guess where you are now for success in any way. Like, I think there are a lot of benefits, and yeah. you know, one of the main things was it, you know it allowed me to see the world, and mm. um, it, you know it gave me a lot of experience with leadership. It gave me uh, a, a lot of different things that I, I, I'm really thankful for, for being in. And also when I got out, it paid for college completely, um, and it also paid for uh, for housing as well. Um, so a lot of people don't know this, but you know if you're in the military for 36 months at least, you, you rate full GI Bill benefits. And a lot of times before before people get out, they think, oh, it only can cover you know $26,000 in college. But that's not true. So a lot of these colleges, they'll have this yellow ribbon program that'll match that amount and also cover the rest of the tuition. Mm -hmm. So for me, I was able to get um, a full, uh, basically a full ride to University of Miami where it paid for the entire thing, plus it also paid for housing as well. Um, and the biggest benefit I saw from when I got out was uh, was the VA loan, where you're actually able to buy a home and put zero down on a home. And there's no limit to it, to it, it's based on your income. So a lot of people think there's a limit to it, there's, there's not, it's just based on your income. Um, so what I suggest to people when they get out, you know, when they go to college and then when they get a job, I would even suggest doing this during college because you can use your, your housing stipend to um, buy a home if you're in an area that's kind of uh, not, not that expensive, it would be, that'd be best to do while you're still in college. But then, especially when you get a job, you can use that job offer to qualify for a loan and then get a place for zero down. Wow, it's pretty incredible. Yeah. So it, I, I would say that, I mean, a lot of people get out of college and they're, they're, they're kind of slapped in the face with student debt or, you know, they kind of get out having to keep up with life, but it seems like it set you up to kind of get a head start in a beautiful way. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It definitely did. You were talking about kind of the benefits that happened with you joining the military. Um, when it came to your, I guess, early adult life, like what were some lessons kind of growing up that set you up for success, like mentors or maybe some words of advice that kind of got you geared in the right direction? Right. Yeah. So one thing that I, that I really learned from, from my parents and particularly my, my father is the, uh, is to stay out of debt as much as possible. Um, except for, except for your home. I just talked about putting your home in, into a mortgage, but, um, and why is that? Um, so there's, there's a mul multitude of reasons. Uh, one thing is that you know you're, you're paying a lot of interest uh, on on these loans, like a, like a car. You're basically, if you're able to pay that much per month, why can't you save that much per month to um, to eventually just buy the car outright? And then so you're going to save on interest. Also, it's going to be emotionally better. It, a lot of people get into all this debt and they're thinking like, oh well, why would I spend? Why would I drop all this cash on something when um, my money's going to be building higher in you know the SP 500? Like say SP 500 is going up at an average of nine to 11 percent um, and they're like oh this car I can get it for um, you know five percent APR or whatever and so that, that's how they justify it but it's it's gonna really you know take away your life uh, emotionally because now, now you're having to make this payment every month and that's why you know you see in all these in, in all these shows with all these people uh, you know really stressing out about bills um, you know, if, if you avoid debt, you don't really have any bills except for the place you're living. Let's talk about businesses that are starting out. You know, you're, you're setting something up, um, you're well in your way, and then these businesses could crumble with, a, with one lawsuit. What are some warning signs or how can you set yourself up for um, not getting blindsided by a lawsuit, uh, protecting your assets? So, I mean, the, be the best time to protect your assets is right now. So it's before the lawsuit, um, because once you actually start getting into a lawsuit, start getting into litigation, it could make it more difficult. Make, and then um, say your, your assets are already frozen because you're already in a lawsuit, now you can't do anything. So the best time to do it is right now, especially if you have significant assets. But even if you have um, you know, a, a small amount of assets, it's definitely good to do, you know, to protect your family um, in the case there's a lawsuit, in case there's a divorce or any other um, legal troubles you have. Even if people are, you know, new businesses and they're starting out, um, they might see asset protection as a big investment, but right. in the long run, I would say it greatly benefits them. Okay. Um, how can someone who's, I guess, not completely uh, swimming in the cash yet, how can they protect their assets? 
Well, there's definitely cost-effective ways of doing it. Mm. Um, so if you if you own, if you own a home, there's uh, certain things you could do to structure it in a way that keeps your name out of the records, the public records, and yeah, you, know, you don't have to go straight to something like the Cook Islands Trust, which is the most solid form of asset protection uh, necessarily. But um, yeah, there, there's definitely more cost-effective ways of doing it um, where you can protect your assets domestically. And then uh, you can go offshore once once you build up those assets, once you have enough money to, to uh, put a lot into your asset protection. And there's even some uh, more affordable op options offshore. And once it gets to the point where you are in a lawsuit or you're, you know there's a lawsuit that's about to be uh, served, then you can always switch over to a more rock solid form of asset protection. What kind of clients are you taking on? What kind of situations are coming your way? Um, so yeah, I'm getting a lot of different questions and you know, it, it really, the, the, the questions come from all over the board and it's usually people that are doing this for estate planning or people that are facing a, a, an, an upcoming lawsuit. Um, but actually I, I would say the majority of them have been people that are, uh, try, you know, trying to just prepare their assets. So like I said, estate planning and people that could be susceptible to lawsuits and aren't necessarily in a lawsuit. Right, yeah. like they want to plan ahead. Right. What are the common questions you get in those situations? The majority of people that call don't really seem to know too much about asset protection. Maybe they saw the business guys videos or, um, or they just want to protect their assets and they want to know more. Um, we, we get some people that are knowledgeable on it, but uh, the majority of the people when they call in, they don't know much about the Cook Islands Trust. And so that's why we give them uh, we give them all the information they need to uh, to you know let them know that that is um, a, the best form of asset protection. So I know that I mean with d there's domestic trust and there's offshore protection, but I know there are some I guess disadvantages to an uh, to a domestic trust versus an offshore trust. Mm -hmm. Can you give me an example of what some of those benefits are for offshore? So for the offshore trust, so the, the domestic trust, because it's within the U.S., uh, you know, a results-oriented judge can uh, sometimes set aside the trust completely or, you know, order the trustee to release the funds since they're within the U.S. and the trustee has to comply. So a results-oriented judge can really just set aside the trust and, uh, you know, seize the assets. So we, we've seen it so many times, right? So an offshore trust um, is outside of that judge's jurisdiction and... So when they, when a judge in the U.S. tells the trustee, "Hey, release the funds," the trustee can just say, "Nope," right? Because uh, they're they're not uh, within the U.S.'s jurisdiction. Yeah, amazing! Yeah. Such an advantage because I right. feel like you spend all this money and time setting up a domestic trust just for it to get taken away just because they feel like it, right? Exactly. Or it's in their power to get taken away. That's got to be pretty disheartening. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. It's. Yeah, because yeah, because people, you know, they'll they'll go and they'll do all these things within the U.S. to really structure their assets, and they think they're safe and secure, and they get into a lawsuit, and then a judge just says, "No, th this doesn't matter." Uh, okay, trustee, release the funds, or uh, you know, and, and that they can come after your assets, like your properties, like your bank account, like your coin collection, what have you. you know, the domestic trust is still good for estate planning. Right. So let's just say you know you want to set up a living trust so that when you die, your your assets go to your beneficiaries or maybe one best beneficiary maybe multiple beneficiaries it could be wife kids um you know relatives whoever um so that, that's that's when it's really beneficial mm, right right okay. but offshore trusts they have estate planning already built, built in so you know if you have an offshore trust you don't need to have a domestic trust um, a domestic domestic trust would be a cost effective way to set up yourself for estate planning in the event of your death or in the event that you're not able to make decisions, then, uh, you know, it, this person can make the decision or um, the assets will go to this person and what have you. So. Right, so it's just a more secure way to take care of your family, I guess, when you're no longer able to do so. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, I guess, someone experiencing divorce. Um, so when it comes to, uh, divorce is a, it. I mean, there's a lot of emotions involved. Uh, I I would say assets are taken, and people don't usually play fair. Mm -hmm. um, do you feel like, like, how are some ways? I guess someone can set some, set themselves up to uh, not be completely reamed in a divorce. 
Right. Uh, so, w with the younger generations, it's becoming more popular with these uh, prenuptial agreements, so the prenups, um, as a lot of people know them as. Um, They're becoming and, more popular now. Yes, they are. Really? Yeah. Yes, with the younger generation, they definitely are. And I think it was more taboo with the older generations, and now it's becoming more common. And that's something that you can definitely set yourself up, up, up for. I know it's going to be probably a very awkward conversation. Yeah. But definitely, um, definitely is a smart move. I mean, just with the reality of what it is now, I guess divorce is just more common now. Right. So if people aren't, they're not geared for, oh, if I'm with my partner, it's forever. So in a way, I guess it is, it seems transactional, but in mm. a way it, it leads to maybe less, it makes it less ugly in the long run. Right, exactly. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, again, it, it could be an awkward conversation, but one awkward co conversation for, uh, you know, all, for protecting all of your assets down the line could be worth it. Mm -hmm. So, um, de definitely a good idea to set that up. And, you know, if you don't, then um, it's definitely good to set up your assets in a way um, that if, if the divorce does happen, she can't just take all everything, right? So um, you'd want to set it up the same way we, we would for a lot of people where we have an offshore trust uh, and within the offshore trust, trust we have an LLC and uh, you know all your properties, all your positions are are within separate uh, trusts, separate LLCs. And um, so that you're the manager of all this and y you can set your, your assets offshore so a judge can't come after you in the event of a, of, a, of a divorce. So when it comes to choosing a partner, what are some characteristics that you think are really important? Um, sign a prenup. <laughs> um, okay, so, oh, that's, 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 a good, that's a really good question. Um, I guess it would depend. I mean, I think that like, you know, like nurturing is a really good, uh, good quality to have. Um, and someone that really supports you, right? Like if, if, uh, if you want to go, if you're, you're, if you're an adventurous person and you want to, you know, go camping or wh what have you, you know, you want to go travel, um, someone that doesn't, you know, hold you back from, from what you want to pursue. Um, and, uh, and also has their own aspirations and goals as well. Definitely. Yeah. Like and someone sign up for you. I yeah. love that. It's going to keep doing that for us. <laughs> In a romantic way. Like, Hey yeah. honey, <laughs> like I love you and you're so nurturing, but here's a prenup. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> I wonder right. how I would feel. I mean, I feel like for me, I am a big on commitment. If a prenup did come my way, I don't think I'd be insulted. I think mm -hmm. it would be, well, I'm not, you know, I don't see divorce as an option if I'm choosing correctly. So it would be more so, I guess, to make it a less head headache later if that was to happen. Yeah, it's like um, insurance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I feel like it also kind of deepens your investment in your partner, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and ultimately, you want a team player, I would say, when it comes to finding a partner, which is what you were saying. Someone who is, it's, they're there for you as well. It's not like they're just playing by themselves. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and so going off of that, if, if you were to get married and a guy asked you to sign a prenup, how would you want him to go about it? How would you want him to bring it up? <laughs> Buy me a nice dinner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Maybe a gift. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, but yeah. I, I would say... I think when that comes up, you really need to make sure that you feel secure in the relationship and you feel secure in each other. So mm -hmm. I think um, if there's any doubts of how strong the relationship is ahead of time, you'd probably be insulted by the offer because you're like, oh, this is a hole in our relationship. Like, right. why are you thinking of the end? And that's just the insecurity in the relationship. It has nothing to do with um, the, the prenup. Like that insecurity will be there with or without the prenups. Because actually, I don't know how I'd feel. If someone see. threw it up my threw it my way. Yeah, what if they like presented it as like a mutual benefit? Right. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about that. So I guess how would you talk to your partner with it being a mutual benefit? Yeah, so I mean if you both have assets, you know, you both have families that you probably are both gonna get inheritances from what how however big or small that is, um, then yeah, a prenup's prenup's the way to go, then it benefits both both parties. And I think if you brought it up that way, that would be, that would be a good way to go. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Cause I, I guess it is true. Like people think prenups, like my first thought is, oh, there's a, there's a prenup. You're protecting yourself. You're not mm. pr like, I'm not protecting myself. Like I thought my first thought would be you're protecting yourself against me. So mm -hmm. yeah, maybe describing it like that. So it's not so much of an attack. It's more so we're mutually protecting ourselves. 
and like I said, it creates, this, it creates like a, maybe even a bigger bond and more of a desire to make things work when things get hard and sticking together. Right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let's get into some of the red flags that could happen in a partner. So okay. do you think, I mean, going into a relationship, obviously red flags happen. We tend to ignore them. Do you feel like specifically when it comes to someone who is maybe signs that are when you're more likely to divorce, like what are some red flags you'd see in a partner? Okay. So one thing that's really big on the internet right now and like that's been blowing up is the word ick. The ick factor. Yeah, 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 ick I factor, know. Exactly. <laughs> so I, I, I really think that, um, you know, it, it, like figuring out a person's uh, a big red flag for me is if, if a person has like very obscure icks. So a big ick yeah. for me is if a person has very obscure icks. Uh, it's kind of uh, <laughs> yeah. But if, um, it, if it happens more commonly, it's like oh he wore the wrong hat. I got right, the ick. Exactly. It's like yeah. how are you going to invest in a partner with like I'd be afraid to invest in somebody that had so many icks. So like, exactly. How yeah. can I even be myself? <laughs> yeah. It's, like I was actually on a first date with a girl once who. Um, she like, cause I was just, uh, we just got into that conversation and she was like, oh yeah, one of my icks is when a guy has a neck pillow on an airplane. And I'm like, what? like okay, so because <laughs> in, in my, my immediate thought is like, okay, if she has that one, then she probably has a hundred more that are just like obscure and you're basically walking on thin ice with her the entire time. Right. And eventually the, you know, you're going to trigger whatever weird thing she has. And then, um, I, I mean, that also means that, you know, the person can be very argumentative. Mm. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing for me. That's a, so my ick is obscure icks and that's a little ironic, but what are some, what are some other icks you have? <laughs> oh, <laughs> red, no. no, red See, flags you have. Oh, red flags. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, cause, cause I, I think mine are, are very, uh, they're, they're going to be very broad and it's going to be very, like, it would be a difficult thing to you know break through. Right. Um, right. Uh, yeah. I mean, someone who's not. Uh, yeah, again, not someone that's not really uh, supportive of your of your dreams and your goals, and um, mm -hmm. if it gets to the point where basically you're their entire life and that they don't have anything they're pursuing either, that can be um, a big red flag there because mm -hmm. now it's like if you want to do your own thing, if, if you want to pursue your own goals, they're going to get mad at you because um, because now you're you know they they feel like. It's like they're almost threatened with your with your passions or things you pursue right, because exactly. there's resentment that they maybe haven't found theirs. Exactly. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. definitely. That's that's a great way to put it. I couldn't have not have put it in better words. So <laughs> we yeah. got there together. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that's. I mean, that that's a really key thing, and I think that'll be like my biggest red flag. Mm -hmm. um, and then let's see. Oh, another thing would be someone that's just like extremely quick to arguments, right? Mm -hmm. Like, so, you know, th there's things like, I don't know, a good example is like, um, see, I'm trying to think of something, something like small, like, uh, you know, um, you keep leaving the cabinets open or something, right? It's like yeah. not that big of a deal. Right. And there's two ways to approach it. You could say, Hey honey, like you're, you're, you keep leaving the cabinets open. Can you please close them? Right. Mm. Um, Whereas an argumentative person might get mad at that. And, uh, and it's also on the other person that's, you know, take receiving that complaint to, you know, respond the right way. You know, you, you, there's one or two ways you could do it where the, you know, the person says like, um, you know, even if they're angry and they're like, Hey, close the cabinets, you know, um, if you respond, you know, well, I have so many other things to focus on. I can't focus on closing cabinets. Damn it. You know, that, <laughs> right. that, that just starts an argument. So it's like, yeah. uh, I think it's just like a way that people handle themselves, um, not being extremely argumentative. Mm. Um, so yeah, I, I mean, I personally like looking for, uh, cause there's, there's two different, uh, personality types and I'm forgetting the, the exact terminology for it, but it's, it's agreeableness. So it's like mm. high or low in agreeableness. I, I like someone who's a little bit more agreeable. Yeah. I, I would say that I'm, I, I'm actually more on the, the agreeable side where like, I, I don't like to jump into arguments and. A lot of times people that are on the less agreeable side, you know, get joy out of getting in arguments and right, right. That's, so, so for me, that's, that's a big red flag, but some people enjoy it. So it was really informative. And I feel like, I mean, I definitely learned a lot about how to, uh, to set myself up for, um, protecting my assets and not being left floundering around. So and if people wanted to get a hold of you, uh, in the business, um, where can they find you guys? Yeah. So you can go to our website, askprotectionplanners.com or uh, give us a call and uh, we'd be happy to help. 
That sounds perfect. Well, great talking to you, Adam. And I'm so glad you joined the business. It's gonna be it's gonna be a good uh, it's gonna be a good time. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it as well. Yeah, so sweet. Excited. High five. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Oh, yeah. Hopefully, that's probably gonna require a lot of editing, but. <laughs>